why hello there. So we're going to learn how to install WD Black SN850 NVMe SSD for the PS5. I accidentally bought this without a heat sink up, so I had to sort of set it purpose of heat sink. I don't know how to do what we're doing. We're going to get stoned and figure it out together. We're going to watch a video. We're going to learn how to do this in the process. All right? Sound good with you? Here we go. Google 5, a phone plan by Google. I didn't need this extra hard drive. Our built-in VPN protects you from hackers by keeping your connected. Hey everyone, how are you doing? It's Liam from Pushway, and thanks to a recently released firmware update, Sony has finally given PlayStation 5 owners the ability to upgrade the system's internal storage, allowing you to install and play more games on your next-gen console. I'm here today to tell you how to install an internal SSD and expand your storage. Like this may seem a little bit more complicated than it was on previous Sony systems, but don't worry. The process is actually very easy. There are time codes in the description of this video, so feel free to jump around to the bit you need. But before we crack open our PlayStation 5s, let's go over everything you'll need. To increase your internal storage, you're going to need the following bits and bobs. You'll need a standard crosshair screwdriver, a compatible PCIe 4.0 M.2 NVMe solid state drive, with a read speed of up to 5,500 megabytes a second or faster. For more information about which drives are compatible with the PlayStation 5, including how much they cost, make sure to check out our website. I'll pop a link in the description of this video so you can have a look. For this video, I'm using the Western digital black SN850 1TB model that comes without the nice. casing installed. Because if it's good enough for Mark Cerny, it's good enough for me. I mean, he designed the console, so you hope he knows what he's talking about. If you've bought an SSD without heatsink, which I would recommend as it makes the drives considerably cheaper, make sure you have a heatsink that fits. The entire drive, including the heatsink, cannot exceed a height of 2.25mm beneath the SSD and 8mm above the SSD, otherwise it won't fit. Again, check out the article that's linked in the description for some recommended heatsinks. And that's it. If you bought an SSD with a heatsink pre-installed, feel free to skip this section, but if you bought both separately, here's how to attach it. Simply place the double-sided thermal sticker either onto the drive directly or onto the bottom of the heatsink before sticking them both together. Make sure that you stick the heatsink to the correct side of the drive based on whether or not it sits below the drive or above it. In my instance, I had to attach the heatsink to the top of the drive. To make sure I put it on correctly, I checked how the drive connected to the PlayStation 5 before attaching the heatsink. I got it wrong the first time around, but it doesn't make too much of a difference. You can simply peel off the heatsink and reattach it to the other side of the drive. Then you want to grab these tiny little rubber bands and attach them to both sides of the SSD. Simply pull them over both ends until they're securely in place. This bit is a touch fiddly, but it should help keep both the drive and the heatsink attached once it's in the PlayStation 5. Once you're done, it's time to install the drive. Alright, it's time to install the SSD into our PlayStation 5. So first things first, we want to turn the system completely upside down so the PlayStation with both sides is facing the floor. Like so. Next, you want to turn the system away from you as it's facing the right, upside down. Panel, like this. So you have a power port and the HDMI facing you. What is it? Oh, dude. Okay, okay, next step is taking the back panel off. Now this bit feels really strange the first time you do this. It does feel a little bit like you can break it, but believe me, you won't. Take your left hand, put it in the top left here, take your right hand in here. You want to lift your right hand up just gently, and then slide the panel to your left. Ah, there we go. It feels weird, but that does remove the back panel hey. and exposes the internals of the system. We're going to pause this so I can clean this out. Nice. Beautiful machine inside. Here, let's see what the inside of the PS5 looks like so far. That's where we're at. Right in that part of the video. Yep, it's the same thing. Okay, to continue. Turn this around because the bit you want is this bit in the front. So all you need is your crosshair screwdriver. You can just take the screw out to expose the slot. Just take that out. Fun little Easter egg here, if the camera decides to focus, the screw actually has the PlayStation symbols engraved on it, which is a really nice little touch. Once you've removed the screw and make sure you put it in a safe place so you don't lose it, get your fingernail underneath this panel and pop it right off, exposing the bay where we'll be installing our SSD. Once the bay is exposed, you'll notice that there is a little screw here that you're going to want to unscrew before you insert the SSD. Again, just use your crosshair screwdriver. Yeah, that comes right out. There's also a small nut that comes out, so make sure you grab that too. Now, it's time to grab your SSD. Make sure the heatsink is facing up, it's on the top of the SSD, and Set this back down. Get that nut. That the connector is facing towards this side of the console, away from this fan at the back, and towards this metal bit to the right. 
then so we line it up with the connecting port, feel it slightly, slightly, and then give it a nice good push until we hear it. Right, so I actually got this little advantage, which is the other two. I think my heat seems too big. Like that. At this point, your SSD will be a little bit raised, looks a bit comical. Not to worry, like that. the screw is full that we just took out before you installed the drive. You may have noticed when you installed by default, so if you want everything installed, you've got it. New HDD installed. Now we're gonna go plug it in and see how it works. Or bad. terabyte external storage. I've got an additional terabyte secondary internal storage and then the consoles internal storage. But yeah, I should be able to play game for days. So exciting.